Hey everybody, Zach here at Tennis Pro Doc, helping you improve your game with science. And today, it's the Joma T-Ace Pro 2002. It actually took me a little bit of time to get these here in the United States, especially with shipping the way it is right now. But oh man, what a fun play test these were. I cannot wait to share with you all the tests I put these shoes through. And we're gonna find out today, is it worth it for you to hunt these down on the internet as well to get these on your feet for your next tennis match? Here we go. Now I have never played in Jomas before, and I was actually a little bit skeptical of them, just because you know I'd never seen them in person before, and I thought you know if they were that great, they'd be available everywhere, and it really was a hard time for me getting them. But I will say, just from an engineering standpoint on the shoe, as well as playability standpoint on the shoe, these shoes just offered a lot of really interesting things to my game. I'm just so excited to share them with you. So we're gonna start here in the uppers. And the first thing that struck me about the uppers is it's all TPU, and then everything else is just mesh. So that's what keeps the shoe super light. It's almost like the Nike Zoom Cage 3s where it has all their TPU and then mesh. The only thing about the Jomas is, is that TPU is a lot thinner and it's built up in areas that you're gonna have more wear like the toe box on the medial side. So even more than the Cage 3s, this has built up TPU where you need it and just thinner TPU where you really don't. So it keeps the shoe ultra breathable but stable. There's no better example of that stability and breathability than on the shoelace line. Where all the shoelace eyelets are, they are ultra built up with TPU, but then everywhere else around there is mesh. Now the one thing I do not like on the Jomas at all is they got those really thin laces, just like a lot of the ASIC shoes come with. So if you do get the Jomas, make sure you do get beefier laces. If you want to check out the best shoelaces, make sure you check out my video on those. But you will want to get a, just a thicker, just more strong pair of laces for these. All right, so durability test with the Dremel, 10 seconds highest grit sand paper and look barely a scratch on that maybe half a millimeter so not just breathable but durable on the upper so another thing I loved about the Jomas was the ankle. It has a higher ankle collar and it's molded. So it has that little bulbous padding in there. So you're not gonna get that heel slippage that you do with some other all TPU shoes, kind of like the A6 Gel Resolution 8. It also has a combined internal and external heel counter, which I absolutely love because that's gonna give you a lot more side to side stability with the external heel counter, plus just the rigidity of the internal one. All right, getting in the tear down, insole is an EVA material, which is actually a little bit thicker than some others. And that's gonna contour to your foot a little bit better than some other insoles as well. Now looking at the actual midsole, you have more dense white foam on the bottom and a less dense black foam on the top here. So two layers here in the heel. Now that black foam goes all the way from heel to toe. And this is actually phylon. Now what phylon is, is it's EVA pellets that are compressed and molded, then heated, then cooled, expanded and contracted. So what you're gonna get is the contour of EVA, but a little more of the elasticity and resiliency of more open cell foams. So you're still gonna get that contour, but you're gonna get just a little bit more elasticity too. And that's really nice. The other thing I like about the phylon midsole is it's actually really thick here in the forefoot. Remember, only a one centimeter heel to toe drop, 2.4 centimeter heel height. Now looking at the shank, this shank is actually not the most stiff shank you're gonna get in a shoe. It's actually just a tad soft. However, look how far back it comes in the heel and look how far up it comes into the forefoot. So this shank, although not the stiffest shank, it does carry a lot of surface area to it. And so that is gonna give you a little bit more arch support as well as a little more control under the arch and just a little more bulk without adding a ton of weight. Now I saw the outsoles, it immediately reminded me of the A6 Cord FF2. Maybe not as aggressive as the Cord FF2, but you do get that wave pattern. I love the wave pattern. I, I almost like it a little more than herringbone just because I think it grips hard court a little better than herringbone without giving you a lot of that stickiness on a hard court. Now, as you can see, it gets flatter on the inside and then it gets a little thinner and chunkier on the outside. That is gonna allow a little bit more sliding. Now you don't get that on the heel. So if you are gonna slide on a hard court in these, make sure that you are you know, sliding more on your forefoot because the rear foot's still gonna dig into the court a little bit more. But even though the treads are not as aggressive as the court FF2, they are still coming up over the toe box for a lot more protection. And I think the biggest thing that they added this nice little detail was on the lateral flange. They added just this little clip over here. Now this might just seem like minutia, but this can be everything when not trying to roll your ankle. Just that little bit of that clip, that is enough sometimes to keep you stable and not roll over on your ankle. So this is another excellent little design tweak by Joma right here, just to keep the shoe more stable while not adding a ton of bulk and weight. So outsole durability test, the Dremel, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper. I actually had to do this twice because I didn't trust my results, but not even a millimeter of damage either on the outsole. So these shoes are just really giving you a ton of durability packed into this light frame of the shoe, just awesome. 
Now the fit of the Jomas is very generous. My 2E with foot had zero break in time. Even with all this TPU, the shoe was comfortable and ready to play right out of the box. No blisters or anything like that. It is good for flat footed players as well, just because of all the midsole foam under here and high arch players because that foam is so forgiving. So I would say if you have anywhere from a medium all the way up to a wide foot, you are good. If you do have a more of a narrow foot, make sure you do switch the shoelaces. That way you can kind of crank down on them more. But I don't think they're bad for narrow players. You just gotta change the shoelaces. Now playing in the Jomas, they felt absolutely light as a feather. I know they're not the lightest shoes on the market. However, they feel like the lightest shoes in the market right now. They feel as light as like the Mitsunos do. However, they just give you a little bit more just bulk under your foot, a little more beef under your foot, which I really like about these. Split stepping on that nice midsole foam was really nice and bouncy, cushiony. They're definitely not the most propulsive shoes out there, so you're not gonna get that GP Turbo-like propulsion out of them. However, you are gonna get that comfort out of them. You are gonna get really good stability, especially going side to side. Even though these shoes are lighter, the uppers are lighter, with that lateral flange and a little bit better of a wave pattern on the inside, even when going side to side or being off balance. I still felt like I was really in control in these shoes. I think that also has to do with a little bit of a higher heel counter and the external heel counter. So I think a lot of those things combined make these shoes a really feather light shoe, cushion feeling shoe, but they're still gonna give you that stability and durability like some other shoes maybe won't. We have to compromise one or the other. 14.57 seconds on the suicide test. And one of the main reasons for this good time is check out how this shoe plants and is able to get up and move the other direction. The shoe's also ultra light at 11.8 ounces, which just allows it to cut through the air really fast. It is not the bounciest or springiest shoe, however, but with these two attributes, you really get a fast time. Like I said on the serve test, these are not the bounciest shoes out there. Only 21 centimeters on the serve height test and 58 centimeters on the serve distance test. These shoes do have really great speed characteristics, being light and stable, but they're just not the bounciest shoes out there. But if I had to describe these in one word, it would be feathery. And not just feathery in that they feel light and airy and really quick moving around on the court, but also because of that stacked midsole, these two different foams, it feels like a down pillow on your heel and forefoot. So if you're playing a lot of tennis, if you're on hard courts a lot, maybe you teach a lot, you just play a lot of hardcore tennis, and you want something that's not gonna kill your foot, these are actually a really good option. Not to mention with all the TPU and mesh, how light and quick they feel on the court. So really the best of both worlds with these shoes as well as best of both meanings of that word. And if you saw my thumbnail, you'll see I was alluding that these shoes could be a replacement for some ASICs lovers. Now I'll tell you why. On the Court FF2 and the Gel Resolution 8, I kind of feel like the Jomas kind of fit right in between them. Now number one, they're a lot lighter. These are both 14.7 ounces for a 10 and a half shoe. This one is obviously 11.8 ounces. So it is quite a bit lighter. It's got that same polyurethane upper that both of these do, but it breathes a little better. Now on the Gel Resolution 8, remember you get that heel slippage in some foot types. On the Jomas, I never experienced that. Now I don't experience that on the Court FF2, F2. It's just that this shoe is just a lot of shoe for some people. And if you're looking for a shoe that's just a little lighter, a little bit more breezy, it's easier to get around on court, the Joma really fits that bill without having to go into some of the heel slippage territory and some of the break-in on the upper, because some people feel like the Gel Resolution 8 might be a little stiff. The Joma is kind of fix that in their uppers. And I also think if you like the idea of the Vapor Cage 4s and you also like the Zoom Cage 3s, this shoe also can kind of fit in between these two shoes because it's not gonna be as heavy as the Vapor Cage 4s, but it is gonna give you the upper durability and it's gonna give you more of that breathability of the Zoom Cage 3s with a little bit more generous forefoot. So I kind of felt like the Jomas were a little bit more of a generous and lighter feeling shoe than both of these combined. So really two sets of very popular shoes that that the Jomas kind of fit right in between. They thread the needle, which I'm not sure is an accident. Now remember, if you are in the United States, you cannot get these on the Joma USA website. You have to go to their actual website to get them. And let me know if you've had any experience with these, let me know in the comments down below. If you wanna try them, let me know. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on these, uh, just as these are the first ones of the Jomas that I have tried out. I'm really interested to hear what the community's thoughts on these shoes are. Otherwise, I hope you all have a great day, great night, wherever in the world you are tuning in from. I'll see you next time.